What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and now that the dust has settled after the release, I wanted to share with you 10 facts that have surfaced about the iPhone 7 that Apple didn't tell us at the announcement. Some of these are quite interesting, so let's go ahead and get started, and I'm going to teach you some things you didn't know about your iPhone 7. And to begin with, I found it very interesting to learn the price of materials of the iPhone 7. So it's actually not as much as you think. The original iPhone started at $227, and compared to that, the iPhone 7 has a parts cost of $220 for the base 32 gigabyte model. Now this is including labor and assembling the entire phone. So $220 compared to $227 of the original iPhone. I mean, of course, inflation adjusted, that's a lot more, but it goes to show you it came a long way. Now that doesn't count for software or anything like that, developing that just for the actual parts. Now, Apple says the new display on the iPhone 7 is 25% brighter. They're not wrong, but there is a catch. In order to ever even achieve that 25% increase in brightness, you're gonna have to have your display settings set to auto brightness, as manual brightness will never achieve that 625 nits of brightness that Apple says it has, which really isn't a problem for most people. But in order to take advantage of that brighter display, you have to be out in the sunlight somewhere with a lot of bright ambience. Now, tagging along that to display mate, that did a lot of tests on the display of the iPhone 7 said that it is the best display ever. Not only that, but it's also brighter than what Apple said. They got 705 nits of brightness out of this phone. I think that's quite amazing. Now that dual lens camera of the iPhone 7 Plus is actually pretty cool. However, it doesn't always use the zoom lens. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a piece of tape over the telephoto lens just to show you guys as a proof of concept. So when using the 2X feature that uses optical zoom, as you guys can see, it blacks out that lens when I try and use it. This changes when you're in a low light environment. Your phone is actually using digital zoom instead of optical zoom, as I do have a piece of tape over that second lens right there, and it's still zooming. So just so you guys know, depending on the conditions of the lighting where you're at, you're gonna be using a different lens. And this next one is to be expected of any smartphone with stereo speakers really, but Apple's iPhone 7 does switch the orientation of the left and right speaker based on the way you're holding your phone. So if you switch it over, the channels of audio are gonna be switched over to the left and right speaker based on the way you're holding it. And this ties in with the next one. This is Alto's Adventure. This is one of the first games for the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus that actually uses the haptic engine. So Apple has opened up the API and we're gonna be able to feel that haptic vibration in many, many areas, many apps and games, and Apple hasn't really made that clear. So next up is the new adapter. You know, the lightning to 3.5 millimeter adapter. Yeah, it sucks having to use it. I just wanted to let you guys know it will work with any and all old accessories that use that 3.5 millimeter jack. So it's not just for audio, it's multi-use. It will do anything that your old headphone jack could do. And I was very sad to learn that the camera lens on the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus is no longer made out of sapphire crystal. Now this may be because it just takes a long time to make, you know, it's already hard enough to get a 7 and 7 Plus, but it's just a downgrade. The home button, same thing. It's not just made out of regular glass. So that means you're not gonna get the same scratch resistance as you would on an iPhone 6S. Durability may be a little bit better though. That's to be tested. But anyways, the jet black color, that's extremely rare, extremely hard to find. There's a reason it's so rare. And that's because of manufacturing issues. A lot of manufacturers are producing these phones, but they're not up to Apple standards. Now, they didn't really disclose any details, but Apple basically said that it's very hard to make this finish and to get the standards that they want even harder. So the reason you're not getting your 7 Plus until November, because of those low yield manufacturing issues. And with the added water resistance of the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, Apple did actually make some changes to the Touch ID sensor. It now works better with moist skin, not completely full on wet, but just with damp fingers. So if I go ahead and dip my finger in this liquid, and try and unlock my phone. The iPhone 7 Plus unlocks easily. The 6S Plus has issues reading my fingerprints and I did add it the same way dry on both of them. So it's definitely a difference. Now, the one last thing I wanted to say is iOS 10.1. This is gonna completely bring your 7 and 7 Plus to life. When I started using my 7 Plus, which I just got the other day, I was so disappointed. It is laggy. The 6S Plus, I never you know, encountered any delay when opening and closing applications. Now on iOS 10.1 after updating the iPhone 7 Plus, I noticed that it's so much more responsive. And that's especially apparent when closing applications. So if I go ahead and open up a couple and close them, at the same time, the iPhone 7 Plus has this delay. Activating App Switcher has like a half second to one second delay 
display when opening it up. I just didn't understand why. And with iOS 10.1, Apple's making some under the cover optimizations to the 7 and 7 Plus. And those are just a few things that I didn't know about the 7 or 7 Plus and I wanted to share with you. So I hope you learned a thing or two. I mean, the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus has been a pretty awesome release. So I got to say, even for a couple of the negatives, there are way, way more positives that outweigh them. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a great day. Enjoy your iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. Peace.